Good afternoon. This video, I want to deal again uh, with uh, the issue of Simon and was he saved or not? Brian goes out of his way to try to say he's not saved. And he tries to save because he asked Peter to pray for him. And he wants to bring up 1 Timothy 2 5. Well, he wasn't praying to Peter. Remember, Cornelius came in and bowed down to Peter, and Peter said, Get up, I'm a man like you. Well, he wasn't praying to Peter. He was asking Peter to pray for him. That's legitimate. He asking someone else to pray for you, that's legitimate. Uh, as it says in James 5, it talks about that. So it's not Tim Sims uh, praying to someone uh, as opposed to asking someone to pray for you. And people pray, ask people for prayer all the time. That's legitimate. So that's what he was asking. Since Peter had basically put, said, the, the sin to death on him, maybe the money perish along with you. But I'll show you how different, how the different proof that uh, Simon was saved. How another sorcerer was treated in Acts 13. Okay, and uh, how John, I mean, how uh, Paul treated the, the uh, apostle, the uh, sorcerer in Acts uh, chapter 13. Starting at verse 6, and when he had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain source of a false prophet, a Jew whose name was by Jesus, uh, which was the was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called to Barnabas and Saul and decided to hear the word of God. But Alamus, the sorcerer, but so uh, so was his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, Oh, full, full of all subtly, and all mischief, thou child of the devil. See, Simon wasn't called a child of the devil because he wasn't a child of the devil. He was acting like a devil. He was in sin. He was bound in iniquity, but he wasn't a child of the devil. This guy's unsaved. He's a child of the devil. Go to Acts, uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, or a child of the devil, thou enemy of all, all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Immediately there fell on him a, a mist and darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead by the hand. Then deputy, uh, then the deputy, when he saw it was done, believed. Well, that's what he did. He did the same thing Simon did. He just believed. See how simple it is, people? Oh no, he repented of his sins and believed. Oh no, he confessed with the mouth and he believed and confessed with the mouth oh no we called upon the name of the lord and believed he didn't say that there does it king james only guys they want to read what's not there it's exactly what simon did he believed being astonished at the doctrine of the lord now what's the difference here first we see paul calling this guy almost uh, uh, a child of the devil simon's not called a child of the devil second thing is Peter is telling Simon he's going to die. He's going to die. We saw the sin unto death in, in uh, Acts chapter 5. Two people died. And uh, let's see if I find it here. 820. And Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. I was looking for that verse four. I couldn't find it. The money perished with thee. That was the sin of the dead. Now the difference is, you see that? Believers will be turning over the sin of the dead. As punishment. Unbelievers won't be. Paul doesn't turn this person who's preventing him from preaching the gospel. Tell him to the sin of the dead. He doesn't have him kill. Why? Because Unbelievers need to be allowed to live so they can still be saved. Simon was turned over to the sin of death because he was already saved and God wanted to stop his blasphemy, uh, you know, the uh, the word of God. Just like in Acts chapter 5, this was a matter of church discipline going on here. And during the transition going on here, it's very serious church, church discipline. We just possible to have the power to do that. First Corinthians 5, Paul was doing that. First Corinthians 11, people were dying. 
it's not death. Now, Christians still suffer, so it's not death. The apostles had the power to actually pull on somebody. It's the tale of two sorcerers. And Brian Daniel wants to get up there and tell you this guy's not saved because he had Peter to pray for him. And he was bound in his bound in iniquity, and you know, and he's you know, he paid for you know, he paid for it. So, what he said, just like the people lied in first Corinthians 5, he lied to the Holy Ghost. God, Peter killed him. You haven't lied to many, like the Holy Ghost, a person, a person, third person of the Trinity. He lied to the book of Acts. Really, the Holy Ghost came in. See, so all the work of the Holy Ghost now, the Holy Ghost makes himself known, and um. Uh, it reveals the whole reveals the uh, Lord Jesus Christ. It glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, uh, you see that you know uh, that third person in the Trinity showing up and his function. He sent. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ said he was going to send another Comforter. The Father would send another Comforter. Jesus Christ was a Comforter, and another Comforter come. So that's not the same. Another means a different one. <laughs> you know, that's the same. That's the same Jesus Christ. But the point is, unbelievers aren't destroyed, aren't killed. Believers can be killed. When they get so far out of fellowship, God can no longer use them and they'll become a hindrance. But they're going to heaven. This sorcerer here who was, who was impeding the gospel was not killed. Because that's not the spirit. In Luke chapter 9, when they wanted to call down fire on that village. Remember, this is Brian Dangler, by the way, who calls down curses on and death once people die who oppose his ministry. Yeah, he's done that with me and Max. You know, our families and everything. Curse, curse us and oppose that ministry. That's not New Testament. Um, this is, I think it's 942. Let's see. Okay, for 54. Uh, they sit there, uh, the Samaritans and receive him. When his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, without uh, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as lies did. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. That's why that, that, that sorcerer wasn't killed. That was the one who killed him in Acts chapter 13. He was blinded for a month. He wasn't killed. God wants all men to be saved. He doesn't kill unbelievers now. Except if they get so far in the degeneracy that you know, he's got to protect the rest of the people by wiping them out. In that case, that's we get uh, you know a lot of destruction going on because uh, the apostasy has gotten so good, so bad that the gospel can't be preached anywhere. So they have to take out the portions of, of populations. But the point is, though, in Acts, one source was being turned over to sin to death by Peter. And he says, "You make your money and you perish." That's why. That Simon was praying to asking Peter to pray for him, but that didn't happen. In the case of Paul, he doesn't turn that, and he calls him a child, a child of the devil. But he doesn't turn him over to kill, be killed. He doesn't say anything about dying. He says he just put, he blinds him. He blinds him for a month, and then you notice that the uh, uh, the governor believed. So he did. Simon believed. Are we not supposed to believe this guy was saved? The guy from uh, Acts chapter uh, 13, which says he just believed, he just believed. You see. Uh, Sergius Polis, deputy of the county, deputy of the country. And when the deputy, when he saw it was done, believed. So good. Good buying, no, he wasn't saved. <laughs> Just believed. And he's got the old Catholics going down there on the third level now, the intellectual level. No, Catholics aren't saved because 
they, they don't have faith alone. He doesn't even know he's talking. I mean, faith alone is the third level, you know, that's an intellectual. So. I want to stop with you. This is the, this is the, the issue of two, two sorcerers and why God dealt with each one differently. One is well, God, Peter was willing to turn over to, to have him killed as a son unto death. Just like he did in Acts chapter 5. Just like Paul did in 1 Corinthians 5. Because they were blaspheming. And um, that couldn't be accepted, you know, as the church was growing. The second one was an unbeliever, truly a child of Satan. Paul, Paul says you're a child of Satan. And uh, unsaved, God doesn't kill him. No, Paul doesn't turn him over sinner to death because the purpose here is not killing believers. You know, it's, it's in order for one man to have the opportunity to be saved. Because uh, Jesus Christ came to save the lost, to save men, to save men's lives, not to lose, not to not to have, not see him killed, but to save. Him. And so, as long as long as long suffering, as long as he is able for that to happen. He'll he'll uh, allow him to continue to live. So Simon was a saved man, who was a sinner, and that's why God was Peter was willing to turn him over to God, though he's able to, to see him killed. And Simon wasn't playing to Peter; he was asking Peter to play for him. He wasn't really illegitimate by that because Simon was the one who was, uh, no, sorry, uh, Peter was, more, was the one turning him over to Satan by saying, you know, may your money and you perish along with that. You perish with you, the money perish along with you uh, in that issue. Nothing wrong with that, I believe it, you know, in that case. Asking that Peter, you know, reverse it, <laughs> reverse, the, reverse the sentence on him. But I just want to tell you to show you that. Uh, and you see the spirit of blind anger where he, he'll, he'll call down curses on people he thinks are lost, like myself and Booking Max, he thinks we're both lost. And there's no qualms about wishing death on us. That's the hatred this guy has. This is the, the spirit of hatred this guy has on in, in his soul. And he's awake, you can sell it, so the man, the man has uh, no scruples. No spirit, no Holy Spirit in him. And I tell you, he's a very, uh, I'm not kidding, he's a very cool man. He's very cool. I can tell, you can tell by, by his mannerisms, his attitude. There's no spirit of kindness in him at, at all. So I'll stop and put this up. Amen, thank you.